In this video, we're going to be going through how to structure your B2B landing page that will win you more customers. Now, there's a slight nuance in what I just said there. And if you notice, I didn't say convert higher. And yes, I know it does say convert in the headline, but just hear me out. I mean, we manage millions of pounds paid media spend towards client landing pages. And there's one thing in B2B that's clear, especially for high lifetime value products. And that is that a lot of people don't submit the form on the first time they come through to your website. And when we look at the psychology and the physical blockers behind this, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, they're not filling out a form for their windows to be cleaned. They're making a decision on what products or services suit their business use case and the ones that they're gonna be judged on implementing into the whole company and needing to be signed off. While this landing page structure will most likely increase your actual direct response conversions, our main priority here is to make sure that your page delivers your company's message to make sure that you give yourselves the best chance of being shortlisted to win that contract. I'm also going to be giving away this unbounced template for free at the end of this video, along with all the cool features that we're going to go through today to make life super easy for you. And also, if you want to have a free trial to go away and test this of unbounced, without having to put any money down just using the template and switching out into your brand guidelines then feel free to do that too and I'll make sure I link to that in the comments so let's dive straight into the landing page so if we look at the landing page from a back-end perspective, this is the Unbounce Editor. I'm not going to go too much into it. Ultimately, it's a WYSIWYG editor. So it's what you see is what you get. And you can go through and edit it. I've got videos on my channel around how to go through and, and get up and running with this quite quickly. But this will be the thing that I can give you as a, as a download. It's fully mobile responsive and everything else like that. So the way I see landing pages is a game of chess. You have the opening game, which is like the Queen's Gambit. So you have a certain way you open it and it's sort of like tried and tested and proven. You then have the mid game, which is probably the the hardest part and where everyone gets the most lost and we'll go through common mistakes and then we'll go through the finisher so how you can get people to try and convert at the end um but like chess you can't you know sometimes you can win with the opening but you can uh, definitely lose at any stage so let's uh, go through and work out how we can uh, learn from this analogy so first and foremost we have the hero section now the hero section is something that needs to contain five different elements all of which we've included here the first one would be the benefits the very top would be the benefit here so if you're doing for like a digital marketing agency someone comes to your site and we say you know struggling uh, to hit you know q4 targets or want to hit q4 targets you know that's sort of like what we're trying to propose as our value and our very top level benefit we then have this line here which is i'm going to call the dynamic header the dynamic header here its only job as an h1 is to mirror exactly what that user was searching so if most of the people will be sent from google ads to this post and the great thing about it is say for example we do we can do something called a utm query and say for example we have utm uh, UTM underscore location. What we can dynamically do is pull through different, depending on the IP address, depending on what someone types in. If you're using this page for Google ads or ABM campaigns, you can go through and actually dynamically change the content depending on the UTM tag that you, or the UTM structure, which is pulling through. You can also do things like UTM underscore type equals, uh, let's type in a, uh, I don't know, commercial. So we have like, sorry, commercial IT support services. So you can go through and actually change a lot of this. Within the back end, I've already created these dynamic headers for you. So we've got UTM location and default here. So a default will be UK and you can go through and then use the UTM parameters and create location. Next thing will be going down and saying, okay, we've got our benefits. So what is the key benefit or the value that you're going to be bringing? What's the you know, direct thing they've been coming through. So this could be, you know, struggling to meet Q4 targets, a pain point or the value you want to bring, um, you know, B2B digital marketing, uh, agency if that's what they typed into Google this next bit here is going to be addressing the target audience so it would be like to marketing managers um, what's our capabilities so what's our experience in working with the space and how can we form some sort of trust to show that we know what we're talking about as well as features this could be like real-time tracking landing pages you know you know <laughs> faster account management whatever it may be fast account management isn't great but you can go through and and put in your gaps here and then your social proof down here as well as got up here as well it hasn't always got to be google it can be the most relevant one to you if you're a software it could be g2 it could be other ones we then get into the form so the form is super important being above the fold if it is sales leg growth if it's product leg growth you have a slightly different approach but this one here is more for when you're trying to get people to get in contact with you so what happens next you fill out your form details name email phone number and potentially a drop down i filled this in for you and we've also included some hidden fields as well so if you want to go through and create hidden fields you can pull through things like the utm term which would be someone that pulls through um 
the UTM term for the exact Google Ads search term as well, if you haven't got HubSpot or Salesforce, but I'll leave you to sort of go and play around with the functionality of that. So that's very much there. We want to make sure in the hero section, you have benefit, dynamic header, capability and features along with a very clear um, call to action button here. We next go down and what I've included here is a nice little scrolling carousel. So you want to do is go and replace your images with an unbounce. Again, the video on, ha on that is on the channel somewhere. So I recommend going to watch that. So it looks something like this. Forgive the much more B2C logos than B2B, but I just sort of downloaded some random ones and uploaded them here. So you can see here, you can also do a stationary. A lot of the time we do stationary to not gatekeep any of these logos, but it's quite a nice aesthetic and giving the option to do this. So that's very much the section one of this template. We're trying to get through this quite fast today because I need to go pick my son up in a minute. Um, next, we get into the mid game. And as mentioned, the mid game is where people start to make mistakes. And what you want to do, what people typically do is they start going and saying, we offer these services or these are our features or this is what we're good at, yada, yada. But you need to set the scene. And a lot of these people are going to have pain points. And those pain points, this is your time to, to showcase how much you understand the market. Because if you understand the market, you understand their pain. And if you speak to their pain, you're going to get them hooked on this next section of the landing page. So for example, if it's an IT service provider, it could be that, you know, symptom one is your board of people calling you up when they've forgotten their password or can't get onto the internet or their webcam is broken. The second one could be, you know, you're, you know, someone's opened something dodgy and you want to make sure that there's someone on hand to help out with that. This third one could be that, you know, symptom three is you're doing RFPs for bigger clients and I need to know your, you know, your VPN, whatever it is, you need to know your sort of like internal protocol for how you do and deal with cybersecurity to be able to win this client. So speak to these problems. Typically, if you're a software company, for example, you're going to have some sort of help desk where people submit problems. You're going to have questions all the time and it's going to be a theme of the ones you get the most. And if you're looking to target those people, make sure you feature them up here. We next then move down to a pillar testimonial. So the pillar testimonial will be your ideal customer persona. So the person, if you're going after marketing managers and technology companies, make sure this is a marketing manager from someone at an ideal customer uh, target of yours that you're going after. There's no point in putting just a random one from a big company if it's not relevant. The more verticalized, the better. I've always been a massive fan in, in you know, the biggest moat you have is probably going to be your verticalization and your capabilities around that. So this is really good here. And don't make it vague like these guys are great. Make it super specific to how you've added value and sort of tie in to, you know, potentially your benefit or pain point thing here at the top. Next going down, we have the benefit section. Now, as you can see here, there's three benefit sections. That is to uh, comply with the symptom sections. So we have symptom one, should be alleviated by benefit one. So make sure that, for example, the IT service provider um, could be that, you know, make sure um, you, know, you never have anyone come to you with an issue again. It could be we offer around the clock 24 hours sort of like remote hands to help you stay up and running say like the second one could be could be uh, scared about people getting viruses this one would be like leading cybersecurity, which looks after antivirus yada yada and benefit three um, with this point bullet point could be you know we support with rfps to make sure we're helping your business grow so these three things here tie directly back into the pain points and this is great because most people go straight into this being like you know, this is, hi, we do this and we do this and here are our testimonials, fill out a form. Here you're kind of addressing the reason why they filled out. They're already problem aware, they're probably solution aware if they're typing into Google ads. So you just want to make sure that you kind of stand out from the rest. And this is kind of where you can start really resonating and you can really start, you know, getting people to stay on the page and absorb the content because they feel seen. And most of this stuff, in B2B, it's not always about who can offer the most features. There's going to be some sort of loss aversion heuristic where people would rather not lose than they would win loads. So you can not have all the features, but if you keep showcasing that you are the most stable, secure and best option for them that isn't going to get them in trouble, you're going to win more times than not. The next one is hearing from customers. Again, going into that um, loss aversion heuristic would be very much looking at videos from your testimonials. You can go in here and you can add videos of some of your key customers. Again, you can include or not include any of these areas. You can just take out these segments. If you wanted to kind of take out this segment here, you can literally just go and delete this whole segment within there. Next, we have a feature section. So if you do want to include features, so these are your benefits here, like the core benefits you help with, sort of big picture stuff, you can go in and say, we actually have this like really small feature. We have this one, we have this one. Um, we have a tour of the product if you want to use that as well. And then we get on to the end game. So we have the intro, the Queen's Gambit, the mid game, and then we have the final game. And this is really the next steps. And this is kind of the Uber equivalent of like your landing page where 
taxis suck because no one knows where they are or what's going on. Uber is very much, we know the next step because we're tracking uh, our, uh, our order, whatever it is. So for example, you could be cool quote, we'll send you over a plan within 24 hours and then, you know, we'll have two meetings to decide what happens. So make sure people are very sort of aware and have visibility over the next steps um, in a sort of similar way that Uber does. If your value prop is customer service, make sure you get back to them in a way that showcases how good your customer service is. Because if you're an IT support company or a software which helps with X, Y, Z, and they say you've got great customer support, the only way you can create that into a tangible differentiator is by proving it, not just saying it, because people don't believe that stuff. So if you get back to them in five minutes and you say we get back to you know, support tickets within 30 minutes, they're going to believe that and they're probably going to go with you. It's actually how we bought our IT software provider. Then finally, we have our uh, frequently asked questions. And this is really where people don't spend that much time. They kind of just make up questions like, oh, is this free? And it's like, oh no, obviously it's not free. So what you want to make sure you do is actually again, address the issues that people have asked. What are the um, objections that you can go and handle within this? What are the things you can elaborate on? How can you potentially put some of your value props disguised as questions in here to showcase why you're different to other platforms and what, how you're positioned in the market? So, um, and, and, that will work from an object and handling perspective, but also this is kind of the most important perspective I find from a heat map software. Cause if people scroll to the bottom we can see a good percentage of people are consuming this whole thing. What then are they hovering over? Is it a question about, uh, you know, uh, certification? Is it a question around governance? Is it a question around security? Well, what, what is the bit, is it a question around integrations? Like, do you have the right integrations as your software? You can kind of find what people want and then you can start pulling these sections out and slowly putting them into like benefit sections into people's symptom sections because you can see people are engaging with them loads and then you have a final sort of call to action all of this stuff is featured on this landing page i'll create a link like i mentioned at the beginning it's not all about conversion rate we want to see your conversion rate go up obviously they say the industry standard is two percent we see that drastically change depending on the cost of the product and its integration that needs to go within the company and the length of buying cycle and everything else but ultimately we want to make sure that people are spending more time on this page because they're consuming the content in this well-structured environment they obviously have intent because you're sending them to a high intent landing page I hope you found this useful today, guys. And if you like the chess analogy and you want to kind of see how this landing page fits into your wider strategy, I did another video around creating your B2B marketing content strategy here, which I think you'll find super useful. Um, and I do use the chess analogy as well, but that one is slightly better than this one. This one, um, this one was a little bit rough around the edges, but I hope you have a good week, guys, and uh, speak to you very soon.